10 times. I, I know. I was, I was very happy to be there. I was very happy to be there. I'm always happy to be there for a worthwhile waste of money. Spend the money. Spend the money. Hey, took one look at I like it. I would have liked it. Thank you. Don't suppose it's good. One succulent at a time. Good evening, councillors. The meeting of Strategy, Planning and Partnerships Committee of Tuesday, the 2nd of August 2016, is now open. The Strategy, Planning and Partnerships Committee and the Infrastructure and Public Space Committee public meetings will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any or all contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the Council, including transfer outside Australia. The Strategy, Planning and Partnerships Committee acknowledge that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge that they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. Um, we have uh, several councillors on leave, Councillor Corbell and Pender and an apology for Councillor Gulani. Um, I'd like to ask for confirmation of the minutes. Thank you, Councillor Abia. Seconded it Councillor Martin. Uh, is there any discussion? No? Can we pass the minutes, please? All in favour? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there are no requests for public forum this evening. There is no verbal report this evening. Um, items for adoption on block. Um, items seven and eight uh, require discussion. Uh, so I'll put up on block uh, item number nine, the commemorative Chinese Rose Garden. Uh, item number 10, the uh, new park plan for the Rose Garden? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm in the Rose. Rose Garden is nine. So, yeah. Sorry, Councillor Martin for item nine. <coughs> item 10, the new Parklands High School. Councillor Martin. Item 11, Heritage Incentive Scheme Allocation over 20,000. Councillor Clarahan. That's that will go to, uh, there are no items on block. So if we could then go to item number seven, which is the uh, 2016 Local Government Association Annual General Meeting, Notices of Motion and Voting Delegate. Um, I was wondering, members, if I can take this in two parts. Okay. Are we happy to do that? Um, so in that, the recommend, oh, so can I have a mover for part one? Clarahan seconded. No, don't need to do that. Um, so that is in appointing appointing a voting delegate for the 2016 local government association annual general meeting. Um, do we have any nominations for that? Councillor Clarahan. Councillor Clarahan. Are there any other nominations? Uh, is council um, is council happy for councillor Clarahan to be our nominated delegate? All in favour? Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, councillor Clarahan. Would you like to stand? Are you happy with the nomination? Yes, I will. Oh, my apologies. <laughs> Too late now. <laughs> Okay. Uh, if we could, um, Councillor Clarahan, because you're nominated, we can't get you to move that one. If I could have another mover for oh, part one. And uh, so I've got the Lord Mayor as the mover and Councillor Albiard as the seconder. Thank you. Uh, part two, could I have a move for part two so that we can open discussion now? Councillor Moran. Um, 
Do I need a second? Yeah. I just want to go and have a look at the purchases. So point seven, there were three uh, notices of motion that came to the committee on the 1st of March. Um, so I'm going to ask uh, Carly Bennett to talk us through that. Uh, so through the presiding member, when we put this paper up uh, for the last um, annual journal meeting, we actually put it straight into council um, for you to select a delegate and then consider uh, notices of motion at the council meeting. Uh, I, I, I think you um, nominated a delegate in Councillor Clarehan, um, but you deferred for a workshop consideration of mo and notices of motion. Uh, we held that workshop and, and there were two uh, motions that were put through. They were both subsequently lost at the AGM. One was around seeking a change of the uh, code of conduct uh, and the other, I believe, uh, was around um, compulsory voting. Both of those were subsequently <coughs> lost. Um, these were three ideas that were discussed at that workshop, but they uh, were deferred for a workshop in the lead up to the next uh, general meeting. Question? Councillor Clarence. It says in the report that these are draft motions. Could we have a little bit of clarification around that, please? Through the presiding member, they were ideas that were discussed at the workshop. Um, so, you know, perhaps if the report would read better and with the benefit of hindsight as um, draft ideas, um, but they were uh, ideas that were considered, but you parked them and didn't take them forward, so they weren't put. Uh, to you formally as a committee or council, and they weren't put to the LGA meeting either. Yes. So I'm just I'm just wondering whether at what um, administration suggests in terms of do you want us to discuss each of these now, or do we need a workshop prior to the next council meeting? Is that too late? to submit those. Uh, through the presiding member, you could have a workshop. The uh, notices of motion under point 10, they're required to be submitted by Friday the 9th of September. So we do have the time to convene workshop if, if that's what you wish, uh, or we could uh, work through, through them now if it's your call. Lord Mayor. Chair, just a quick question further to uh, Councillor Clearhand's question. This also, I presume, would just come direct to Council through a motion from a member, and if supported, that then would become a recommendation to that body. Is that correct? Um, my understanding is if we want to support any of these three motions, then that will go through tonight, and then that will go through to the meeting of the LGA. Uh, through the presiding member, it, it would go to Council, and Council would make the resolutions. So to the Lord Mayor's point, a, a member at any time before the 2nd of September could raise a motion through Council and if it was adopted, it would then be presented to the LGA. This provides you an opportunity to have a, a considered discussion on it. So Chair, I'm just going to ask another question, um, which means that should we <coughs> proceed with this matter tonight, uh, that would then become the recommendation to council. The council, a member from the floor, could move an amendment. It could then include or remove one of these. It could include additional recommendations. Is that correct? So we're not necessarily uh, signing off on what we're going to be putting forward until each time it goes before council. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Um, I vehemently oppose number two, and we'd like that voted on tonight. I think 16, we should have the voting age of uh, state federal parliament. I don't think there's any need to. And I also think it's very important we include, um, why, um, we look at the motions that we put up last time and lost. I cannot for the life of me imagine why the LGA didn't support 
us questioning uh, changes to the, the code of conduct. That is such a dreadful thing for council. It really makes you wonder whether we should do a Brexit from the LGA as well, if they can't even support us on that. So I think we should put that motion up. I'm, I've changed my mind about compulsory voting, but um, Hassan hasn't, so he may want that included to test the water there. But uh, number two is ridiculous. I don't know who that came from. Uh, certainly didn't come from any councillors. Um, and I think the biggest problem that faces local government at the moment is um, the code of, of conduct, which basically means that everything we do is is illegal. Did you wish to speak, Councillor Abbey? I was at my own station. Is there any further discussion, councillors? Well, I look only that I endorse uh, what Councillor Moran is saying. I, I think. Her suggestion with regards to the code of conduct is important, and I certainly don't support uh, reducing uh, the voting age to 16. I through you, Chair. It looks like there's a difference of opinion on a number of things. It might be best if we did workshop this so that we can have some clarity. It's going to be very difficult to do that tonight, I think. So happy to just set aside another half an hour or so in the next week or two. We can just work through it and uh, take on board some of your comments. Lord Mayor. So, Chair, would that assist you if I move to defer this item to a workshop? That would assist. Thank you, Chair. I move to defer this item to a workshop, Chair. Thank you. Seconded by Sandy Wilkinson. All in favour? Thank you. Through you, Chair. If any elected members have any suggestions that you'd like to talk to Kylie about, I just encourage you to contact her so we can prepare for the workshop. So members, we go to item eight, uh, which is the uh, 2016 Local Government Finance Authority Annual General Meeting, notices of motion voting delegate and nominations for members of the board. Uh, this uh, meeting actually happens at the same time as the LGA Annual General Meeting. Um, sh again, should I take this in parts? Um, if I could have a mover for part one, or a, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, thank you, <laughs> Councillor Clarahan. Could we, uh, so are we agreeing, uh, do we have a, all in favour if we agree that the appointment of a council representative? Can yes. I speak to that, Chair? You may um, speak to that. Uh, this is just regarding part one only, Chair, but uh, given that we've just endorsed for Councillor Clarahan, um, it would just make some good common sense if Councillor Clarahan continued to be the voting delegate uh, at the uh, at the AGM. So I would move that with uh, Councillor Clarahan's comfort. Uh, this is for the Local Government Finance Authority. AGM. I'm just wondering, Lord Mayor, would it, through the chair, would it be appropriate if someone is nominated and were successful that they be our representative, or can you not be a representative and a member of the board at the same time? Yes, that's a very good question, Councillor. Can we get some advice on that, whether uh, it can, in fact, to be two different people, or it should be if we have a successful board appointment? Ms. Bennett? Uh, through the chair, I'm not sure about that. I would need to check that for you, I don't know that. Um, sorry, Councillor Antic and then Lord Mayor. I was going to nominate Councillor Aviard, who's the um, member of the council who has the best grasp on numbers. Thank you, Sam, myself. I was happy to um, second that, but, that was we, ironic. but we were just trying to work out whether we need two different people or okay. <laughs> Um, okay. Sorry, Chair, I've just got to ask a question. I think we're um, possibly a meshing two different issues. We have a voting delegate mm -hmm. to vote at the LGFA AGM. Then we have in part two a nomination for would councillors like to put up one of their fellow members to sit on that board. Um, in the event that our nominee was unsuccessful in sitting on that board and it was the same person, we would then lose a vote at the table at the AGM, if that makes sense. It's actually two well, separate processes. Right. I'm, happy, so, I'm happy to accept the nomination if someone not. Did you nominate me, Lord Mayor? I can't remember. Yes, so, yes. Okay. you did. Yeah. So I'm happy to accept that nomination for our representative at the AGM, which we will have anyway, regardless of whether correct. we get um, <laughs> someone on the board. That's correct. Thank you. If I could have a mover and a seconder, Councillor Clarahan be the representative. So moved, Councillor Wilkinson, seconded, Councillor Slammer. 
Um, now, point three. Oh, if I can that to the vote. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. All in favour? Councillor Anzi? Yes? Thank you. Does that require a seconder? I'm happy to second that. So it does. So, okay. So we're now asking whether anyone would like to nominate a council member or officer to the board of the local government finance authority. So we've got Councillor Abiad. So uh, Councillor Antic uh, has you. nominated yeah. Councillor Abiad. Councillor Abiad, do you accept the nomination? Happy to, thank you. Are there any other nominations? Could I just ask whether um, there's a thing in here saying that they want gender um, equality on that? Should we nominate a man and a woman? Yes. Um, in that case, I'd nominate. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, advice is that we are able to do that. I'd nominate me. No, can't do. And can't nominate Sue because there might be a problem. I don't want to nominate that one. I don't want to either. Um, so in this instance, no, I'm sure other councillors will just do a nominate a uh, female. So, but because there's remuneration, councillor. I'll be able to need to be the room while we vote on that. Wouldn't we? Is that right? Just <laughs> Thank you. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so if I could have a, a mover and seconder for Councillor Abia to be yeah. the nomination. Thank you, Councillor Clara Hans, seconded by Councillor Slummer. Um, all in favour? Any, any discussion I should say? Thank you. Um, um, number three. Can't go. Can't close that door. Thank you. So, he's disappeared. <coughs> Um, so now we have point three, uh, if we wish to give notice of any motions of matter be considered at the local government finance authority annual general meeting, there are currently no motions. Could I, if this, could I ask a question if it's time for us to defer this also to the workshop for the previous motion? Yes, Bennett. Uh, through the presiding member, there is less time for this one. The closing date for motions is the 19th of August. So, um, so it, it would be challenging for us to meet the LGA or LGFA time frame um, and conduct a workshop. Okay. Question, Chair, but given that time frame, uh, that could be a motion from the floor on next Tuesday at the Council meeting. So we have an opportunity to consider our position and put forward something for conclusion. So. Let me move that that's deferred until the council. Thank you, Councillor Marsden. Mm -hmm. Do I have a second for that being different? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, is there any discussion? Yeah. All in favour? Thank you. Item 9, commemorative Chinese Rose Garden. Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, I, I was sort of hoping someone else would speak to this, but I, I'll um, put forward the recommendation. And um, I really only wanted to address two points. The first is that um, I draw to the uh, attention Sorry, of the Councillor, committee. if I could have a seconder before you start. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I draw to the attention of the committee that uh, one of the um, proposed sites has been knocked on the head again on the basis of the draft parklands management strategy, at least in part. That is, at point nine in supporting information, uh, Park 24 off West Terrace is ruled out partly, at least, because there are other plans in the draft management uh, strategy. But uh, that really isn't the main point that I wanted to make. Um, I am uh, fairly agnostic about uh, this uh, uh, Chinese garden, or indeed uh, any of the things associated with our uh, sister cities. But I do note uh, that the administration has proposed a rose garden for deal gardens where there are existing roses and a Chinese wisteria. And that location is, I note, some distance from the location proposed by several business people 
and quoted in an article in the newspaper at the weekend. Uh, they say that uh, the ideal location is the, uh, the site that will become vacant in the next few weeks when the old conservatory is demolished. Um, uh, they say that um, this is backed by the CEO of the SA branch of the Australia Chinese Business Council. It's been pitched to others. Um, uh, including um, uh, the Chinese Consul, and that the Adelaide City Council has been slow to act on this proposal. Um, the bankers say we've even said to the Council the Chinese government would love this as a sign of our commitment to our relationship with Qingdao. Now, uh, I'm not sure who they've been speaking to in Council, but it seems to me that everybody needs to be aware that there's a difference of opinion about where this rose garden should go and the Australia Chinese Business Council CEO and the consul seem to have a view about where it should be and our administration is proposing another location quite some distance from there. Um, as I say I'm fairly agnostic about this but um, I do think that was worth noting. <coughs> Thanks, Chair. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to that. Members, it's, um, um, uh, unfortunately, we've got two matters which are similar but different. Uh, this is Councillor Corbell's motion from some time ago with regards to the establishment of a commemorative Chinese Rose Garden at the bequest or the request of the Rose Society, as we know, who are having a, a global Rose Conference in the City of Adelaide, I think in 2021, recognising that it takes some years, members, to establish a Rose Garden. So there's a little bit of a post haste type discussion here. Now, the site which is proposed in your papers on the map actually refers to a site which is a very old Rose Garden in the City of Adelaide, which is in a considerably worse for wear state. So this is bringing a former Rose Garden uh, back to its former glory. Uh, and then having a uh, small but appropriate in signature to basically, because China has a deeper affection for roses, as we do, um, to acknowledge our sister city relationship with Qingdao. Concurrently, but some months after, of course, there was a move by elements of the community for a Chinese pavilion. Now that's a very different project, which is yet to be scoped, yet to be costed, um, and the discussion from the community, as reported in the media, I think on the weekend, as Councillor Martin rightly said, was that the location of our former glass house, greenhouse, um, soon to be demolished. <laughs> Councillor Moran will be happy about that. 21 years. <laughs> all good things take time, Councillor Moran. And um, the, so that we have two separate issues. Um, uh, one, which is we have certainty in front of us, I must say. Um, we've got a uh, Rose Garden, I've gone and looked at it in terms of the proposed location. I think it's a very good proposed location. It will reinstate a former Rose Garden and then um, a small commemoration around our 15 year relationship with Qingdao and our 30 year relationship with uh, Shandong Province. That's what this project's all about. So that's what we're being asked to vote on this evening. So that it goes to council next Tuesday. So I, I do support that. The other project may have merit, but as an elected member, I don't know. I don't know what the costs are, I don't know what the proposal are, I don't know what the timelines are. It could take five years. I mean, I really just don't know. So um, my view, members, that I'll be supporting this uh, in terms of this recommendation from Administration 99, and uh, we'll look at any other matters separately um, at some point in time yet to be decided. Thanks, Chair. Would anybody else care to speak? If not, um, can I... Sorry, sorry, Councillor Wilkinson. Um, what consideration was given to um, uh, using the rose garden that is directly in front of the pavilion, which is a rose garden that's also in somewhat decline, as which would then yes, would align no. with where the mm. pavilion is intended? What consideration was given to that as an application? Administration. Through you, Chair, thank you. Um, Councillor Wilkins, that, that is the rose garden that we have. No. Yep, that is actually the sign. Thank you. Just a minute. Just to obviously take one minute. Uh, yeah, no, I mean directly in front of it, between the road and the pavilion. That's not a rose garden. It's got oh, some roses. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yes. 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 Yes
Can we have some clarification, please? Through the chair, I'll just get Martin to outline. Yeah. We're talking about the yeah. garden right in front of the office. Mm -hmm. Is that your question to mm -hmm. the chair? Yes, yeah. 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 um, the terraced rose garden is not considered suitable for this uh, commemorative Chinese rose garden because of the um, European nature of the, of the garden as a whole. For your garden is designed to be on very European lines and to, and to alter that central rose garden would. Um, Tamper with the, the cultural heritage of the garden. Okay, thank you. So we need an alternative site, regardless. It says no more to that, Councillor Martin. Um, yeah, look, thank you, Chair. I, uh, I guess my concern stands uh, in as much as. We're proposing to spend a significant sum of money, $50,000, to install a rose garden in a location 200 metres from where the Chinese community seems to think with or without a, a tea room or a pavilion or whatever would be the perfect location. Uh, and so there is the prospect, possibility, the potential that we may be asked to do the same thing in the near future. However, I will not oppose it. Um, I'm, I'm not a... Um, assistant city relationship person, so um, it it, um, it has my support too. Thank you. Could I ask members to vote on the recommendation? All those in favour? All those against? Thank you. <laughs> Item ten: <coughs> the new Parklands High School. Uh, Councillor Martin. Um, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, is everybody happy to take the amendment uh, that I'm proposing as read before I seek a second? It was distributed earlier this afternoon. Okay. Look, I'll, I'll take that to mean I'll read the amendment. Um, it is that uh, one is as printed and two is amended to say defers this matter until provided with 2.1 advice from APLA that its concerns including those about a separated bikeway and pedestrian access on the eastern side of Frame Road and the details of the temporary works compound have been answered. 2.2 such information that would allow council to be satisfied appropriate arrangements for sporting fields for Frame Street High School students have been negotiated. 2.3 options for car parking arrangements other than on-street parking for the high school's full-time, part-time, casual teaching and support staff and any senior students who are unable or declined to cycle, walk or use public transport. 2.4, details of the planned potential hard court noted on the most recent plan and other similar initiatives under consideration. 2.5, Clarification of how it's proposed to ensure the protection of Aboriginal remains uncovered immediately adjacent to the site and an assurance no other remains or archaeological significant material will be disturbed by the construction. And 2.6 proposals for the management of any hospital waste excavated from the site. Uh, could I have a second for the alternate motion? Councillor Moran? Would you like to? Uh, it, okay, thank you. Look, I proposed uh, this uh, amendment, and I suggest to members that we need to understand the, uh, the context for all of this. The last time uh, the matter formally came to Council, it was for the purpose of determining our position on the government DPA for this area. And by a fair majority, the Council decided that it was to be a non complying uh, um, DPA. Uh, and that there should be the accompanying uh, rights of appeal. Now, we did that because of our policy on this bit of Botanic Park. Um, and I have copies of it here. Um, they say basically minimal uses or activities which further alienate parklands from public usage and specifically addressing uh, the, uh, the reed building suggest uh, that any infrastructure, including schools, should take place in a manner that respects the open landscape character of the Botanic Gardens. Now, subsequently, um, we uh, lodged our concerns 
even though at the time the minister and the premier a few weeks earlier had assured all of us and South Australians that the new high school would be contained to the footprint of the Reed building. That was their assurance. Uh, that has not been the case. And indeed, it's more than doubled in size. And we've gone from one building to what I calculate to be four separate buildings all conjoined. Now, uh, the information we were given uh, at that time was apparently incomplete. And I'd suggest to you that the information tonight is incomplete in the sense that we are being asked here tonight to approve this development. All that's happened since the last time this came before us was the government ignored our request for a non-complying development and the administration submitted a series of design principles um, uh, and uh, uh, is telling us here that those design principles and the government's design are okay. In other words, they're implying support. Now, we haven't voted on that and this is our chance. Uh, I'm, I'm disappointed that that's not made clear in here. Um, Apple had their say last month and they weren't happy at all, as you can see from part one of uh, this recommendation. There are a number of issues outstanding for them. And there are, for me, huge questions about uh, a lack of information that applies to other aspects of this. Uh, and, and in no particular order, where are the playing fields for this high school? the kind enjoyed by every other high school in South Australia. Uh, the best a department official could muster for the recent APLA meeting was that it's being negotiated and it's very complicated. <coughs> They're talking to the University of Adelaide. Good luck there. Um, quite apart from the uh, issues associated with that, uh, there is a huge safety issue if indeed the discussion is about uh, going down towards Park 9 and 10, about piling a thousand students onto the bridge across the Torrens at that point. But uh, my concern there is, in the absence of a negotiation, there may well be a threat to further parts of the parklands, which will then, it, it will be suggested, need to be made available for sporting fields. Then there's car parking. Does anybody here seriously believe that every member of staff at the high school is going to leave their car at home and then take the dedicated school bus that's proposed from the school either to the bus station in Grenfell Street, transport hub we don't talk about, the railway station, uh, or alternatively pedal home. Um, certainly not the administration, because if you have a look at figure five, we're already count counting the number of street parks available. Um, in order to anticipate where the parking spaces might come from. Uh, now, the problem with that, of course, is that uh, visitors and residents, and especially residents in North Adelaide, are going to be more put upon, more pain, to try to accommodate uh, the visiting vehicles. So why isn't there a coherent parking? It's just absolute twaddle to exclude it. Now, on top of that, there's the growing footprint of the, uh, the schools, not one building, now four. And there's now an arrow several hundred metres from the school that points to a thing called hard court. Now, it might be a hard court or a half court, I'm told. Whatever it means, it's not grass. Uh, and it's possibly not trees either, because where it's proposed to be located, there are trees. Uh, but there's no detail. And if we approve this, Nobody should be surprised if it looks like something else when it comes uh, to the construction moment. Now, there are crucial issues too related to excavation. I'm informed by a reliable source that there's an area immediately adjacent to the cons construction zone and possibly in it where Aboriginal remains were uncovered some years ago. They were reburied and I understand it was speculated there may be further remains and there may be archaeological matter of significance. Uh, it was proposed to be investigated further. It was not. Now, I can say even more about this, and I'll get the chance when the summing up comes. But Chair, thank you for your indulgence. And I just say, those are just a few of the unanswered questions associated with this. Thank you, Councillor Martin, Lord Mayor. Oh, sorry. Councillor Moran, has a seconded? Yes, look, I think Phil has, um, I don't think we need to discuss it tonight. Um, 
uh, we need to have a think about it and look at uh, Apple's advice. But um, I'm horrified that when we got briefed, it was clearly our support. We were very fluffy tailed and, and eager to please and uh, eager to accommodate um, a, new, a new campus for Adelaide High, which is the beloved high school in the City Council area. Uh, at no stage was there any suggestion that the building, the school wasn't going to just be the Reed building. And um, while I thought that was a very inappropriate place when there's half the, the other side of West Terrace has got empty building blocks, if they wanted to put them there, we should support it. Now it's a completely different beast, totally different. And I absolutely do not support it now. And I'm going to have a chance to have a look at the, um, the things that Phil has put up here. Uh, three car parks for a large city school. I mean, for goodness sake, one is able and two teachers. I mean, that's just um, absolutely, on that alone, without anything else, we need to defer to look at that. Uh, there are no ovals. I've been very surprised that Adelaide, uh, to the university would share their oval with the school. Um, but with all these unanswered questions, we cannot po possibly pledge our troth again. We did so under false um, pretenses last time. No fault of our own, so I urge you to support the deferral. Thanks, Chair. I will reserve my right to debate, but I just got questions, if I could, in the interim, please. <clears throat> the practical implications of a deferral on this matter, Chair, if uh, administration could just brief us as to if this matter was deferred, it would be deferred to what and what that would mean in terms of, let's say, government timelines with regards to this site? That's my first question. Through you, Chair, thank you. The, um, the development application is due within the next week or two, it's our understanding, Lord Mayor. The, the process from there will be, it's DAC. DAC will refer to DAP for comments because it's on the parklands. Um, DAP can consider and give it comments back. Um, any comments that council <coughs> makes are separate or does not make are separate to that process. Okay, um, thanks Chair. The, uh, in addition to that, um, I mean Councillor Martin has brought up some quite reasonable points here but the, um, and I'm not entering the debate, I'll do that later, but I'm just asking questions, is that uh, addressing some of uh, the, the points here, is there anything that administration can share uh, with the members so that we can make an informed decision with regards to matters such as uh, contamination, uh, any progress on the ovals, is there any additional insight that I imagine this is a fairly uh, uh, fluid matter and things are um, uh, uh, unfolding fairly quickly in car parking and um, Councillor Martin's reference to the hard courts on the site itself. Is there any further information you can share with us, please? Through you, Chair, thank you. Um, inquiries that we've made as recently as today are that Ditchy at the moment has said they don't have any knowledge of any very medical waste. Um, in terms of Aboriginal remains, I can't comment on that at all. Um, in terms of use of ovals, open space at the school, our understanding is that Ditchy is still um, awaiting the outcomes of negotiations between education and University of Adelaide. Um, the car parking issues, likewise, the information we have is in the report and some of the additional commentary in terms of use of public transport, the <coughs> new public transport links is pending. So the, in, the up to date information we have is as in the report and we understand there's still investigations going on in regard to those matters. Thank you. One last question, Chair. That if we do elect to defer this matter, does that effectively mean that Council will not have a voice on this matter? because other processes will just proceed without council's comment, meaning the matter will proceed to DAC uh, and council as a consequence of deferring and timelines uh, would effectively be mute on this matter. Three, Chair, thank you. Um, Lord Mayor, the, the timing of everything, the, this will now proceed to DAC. DAP will defer or refer to DAP for comments, as I said earlier, because the is actually on the parklands. 
and those comments will then go from DAP back to DAP to make a final decision. The DA, as I said, is due, or development application is due, um, but we, we haven't actually seen that as yet. In closing, uh, not debating, just asking questions, but if, just if you wouldn't mind just validating this through the chair, is that council, of course, is not the ultimate decision maker on this site in any case. Through Chair, that's correct. It's DAC, Development Assessment Commission. Thanks, Chair. Councillor Clarion. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Councillor Wilkinson had his hand up before that, and then Councillor Clarion. Um, yes, thank you. Um, I think Councillor Martin has raised some very good questions, which has been, you know, brought to our attention through his correspondence that we've all received, and. And I'm, I'm frankly flabbergasted that a proposal with three car parks is being seriously entertained. I'm, I'm amazed it's being supported and put forward. It's just absurd. Um, and um, and the fact that vacant car parks on the street are being counted, which have been double parked by the university and other users of those on-street parks many times over. You know, this is what happens, you get traffic reports and the same car parks get counted to justify inadequate parking on five different developments, including this one. So they get multiplied, they get they get recounted again and again and again by different traffic consultants for different different proponents. And uh, you know, that parking situation alone is just absolutely crazy. Um, matter of the sports fields, certainly when it first came to us, it was just going to be reuse of just the rebuilding. That's one thing. But this is four times the size of the footprint on parklands. And We've got a bevy of buildings in the institutional zone in the old Royal Adelaide Hospital site, which would lend themselves beautifully to, to, a, to, a, uh, to a secondary school. That's the sort of use of the apartments that we should be seeing on the old Royal Adelaide Hospital site. Um, and, and yet that's being reserved for apartment developments, whilst we then are being asked to give the nod to turning grass and trees parklands into, into another building site. Um, so we've got even more buildings, and, and great lengths were went to to um, return the uh, Royal Adelaide Hospital at Grade Car Park um, uh, to the immediate south of this site to actually re-establish the parklands there. And the council went to great lengths to um, uh, pull up the hard stand uh, at Grade Car Park to get the um, uh, Western Gateway to the Botanic Gardens in connection with the Bathsmith Library of the University of Adelaide. And, and the, um, then the Reed Building was sort of left looking like it was basically waiting to basically clear out so to enable the parklands to continue from there to flow through to Botanic Park. But not only is it not going, but it's actually been quadrupled in size in footprint. So, um, um, but you know, the parking and the um, uh, the sports fields alone are prob fundamentally problematic. So um, I don't think we should be, uh, you know, giving our um, agreement to, to something that, at least without that information. Um, and I'm amazed it's been recommended as it has. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Councillor Clarehan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Look, I, I do support this deferral to talk about, to, to look at some of these issues. And I was also wondering um, whether the mover and seconder might take on a couple of other of the issues. But as has previously been said, one would have thought that the RAH site would have been the perfect location to establish a school. But no, they've chosen the read. The government's chosen the read building. We had a development uh, plan amendment for our parklands, and what we find is that uh, they ceased to be non-compliant, and now any application for any development on the parklands becomes a, a non-merit um, application and or category and that excludes people um, from having any appeal rights. The other thing is that, um, as has already been mentioned, is that the size of the campus has, I'm sorry, it's the size of the campus has indeed increased hugely 
uh, in size. One initially was told that it would be just the reuse of that building, but now uh, we've actually got another building to the south of it and an atrium joining the two. We've also got a basement car park, is it? Which I must say, um, I don't have an objection to, but I'm certainly beginning to wonder about whether in fact three car parks on that site uh, is just ridiculous. And, and that makes me wonder then whether um, this is going to be a sort of a, uh, one of those developments that uh, goes through a, a, an assessment process where it just keeps getting built on. And so we start with as we've already started with reuse of the existing building, it's now going to turn into a development of requiring extra construction. We're going to start with three car parks, but then suddenly we're going to require a lot more. And if anyone's got anything to do with the running, had anything to do with the running of a school or any of those, that sort of educational institution, you understand that, you know, a parent coming to pick up a, a, an ill child or an ill student uh, someone delivering goods, uh, volunteers or visitors that uh, to the headmark principal or the principal's office, etc. Three car parks are just not going to do it. The other issue is in relation to the school bus. Now, does that mean that we're going to have a school bus parked in the parklands permanently? Where does that bus live? These are the sorts of questions I think we need to ask. In terms of the lighting improvement, we're talking school altering its hours, which I think is a brilliant idea, so as not to compete with peak hour traffic. But 5.30 in winter, it's dark. Uh, so it says here we will require lighting improvements, in particular around a Botanic Park. We know that that's a very dangerous area. Who's going to pay for that lighting upgrade given it's not council's infrastructure? That question hasn't been answered. In terms of the, um, it looks to me like a lot of the students will be accessing the school via Plane Tree Drive, which is behind Botanic Gardens. What are the accessibility um, issues or are there any accessibility issues arising from the Oban work on Hackney Road? Will people be able to turn right there? I don't believe they can. So how will they get into the Planning Tree Tribe to actually drop students off? So that's another issue that needs to be, um, that we need to have addressed. We're also talking about the Botanic Garden, the Plain Tree Drive that's used by people visiting the zoo and the Botanic Gardens. Uh, does that road then become a shared use zone? because there's no footpath there that I'm aware of that will take people from, from um, the bus stop on Hackney Road to the new school. That's another issue that needs to be addressed. Um, I've got here um, disability access, given three car parks. Um, and the other, of course, the thing is about what sort of uh, impact is all this school and its operation going to have on North Adelaide, the Adelaide Zoo and the Botanic Gardens. Already we see how schools in Western North Adelaide, there are major issues there with students driving to school and wanting to park there. Uh, what sort of impact is that going to have? The women and children's um, hospital already can't find enough on street car parking. We've had to address that issue. So I think we just need to be less naive about this, really, about the provision for this school and have some of these questions addressed, I think, before we are prepared to endorse it. Thank you, Councillor Clarehan. Lord Mayor. Thanks, Chair. Uh, I'll, now, I'll now debate this. The, the applicant position, I, look, I do understand um, some of the concerns and questions that members are raising about this. So they're very practical questions. But to my aforementioned questions through the Chair to administration, that if we elect to defer all of the uh, well-intended recommendations here from APLA up to committee will effectively go unheard by the sound of it because the train will continue to leave the station. This will proceed through DAC. Council won't get its voice. So I think this is a question of 
are we supporting the recommendation from APLA to this committee and ultimately up to our chamber, or are we amending it? But maybe deferring it is actually not the right course of action because it possibly sets up a dynamic where we are mute on this matter. And that's a question of timing. It's because of the timing associated. So if we do defer, we don't get a voice. That's what I'm saying. So there are some very good elements, which I'm sure you'd all agree with, members, with regards to this APLA recommendation. Um, we have only a matter of weeks ago endorsed a uh, spend on <coughs> cycling infrastructure to support this very school uh, at the base of the Royal Adelaide Hospital site. This, this site chair also, of course, is subject to a separate DPA. So I think it's going to be very easy for us to get all of these issues enmeshed with regards to the old RAR site and this school site. They are two principally different things. We will all want to see provision of open space in the old RAR site when that matter comes before us and a whole range of things. So notwithstanding, I do think Councillor Martin has got some uh, good comments to make. I think Councillor Carahan's made some good comments and Councillor Moran and everyone else. But just so I'm 100% clear, Chair, and so that we are 100% clear, if we defer, do we lose our voice on this matter? That's what I need to know. Administration, I think, has answered that, but would you, just for clarification, the CEO? Oh, look, through you, Chair, look, it's a matter of, of judgment at the end of the day. Clearly, we're not the planning authority in this matter. There are a range of issues of concern, yes. Um, it may well be that council wishes to defer, or it may be better that we do lodge our concerns so that we are heard. It may be a decision of council. It's quite possible that um, we could defer tonight, but re report still to council meeting next Tuesday. We won't have the answers that you're looking for, but that will enable you to, to formally lodge the issues you wish to raise. And I think that could be appropriate. So take on board the, the amendment, but realistically, we will not have all the answers at, at, by next Tuesday, but you may then determine on which basis to move forward. Okay, and closing, Chair, thank you for your patience, everyone, but this is a very important matter. I must say, for the record, I do, of course, I do support this school. I think it's very good for the City of Adelaide, and I'm sure that most members do. So it's not a question of what, it's a question of how. Now, CEO, through to you, if we do defer this matter, it would then, as a consequence of this timing conundrum, which we have, it would need to go to council on Tuesday. We can work amongst each other and bring that back for a debate, for amendment or whatever that might be more appropriate on Tuesday. Is that correct? Yeah, through you, Chair, that is correct. And, and through this, during this next week, we can attempt to, uh, to, to respond to the issues that Councillor Martin has raised. Okay, on that basis, I'll support the amendment. Is there any more debate members? If not, just... uh, Councillor Martin, I'm going to ask you to sum up. I do need to do it in five minutes because I'm going to have to adjourn this meeting. Um, sorry. Are you offering more, more than five minutes? No, later? I'm not. Oh. I'm just going to keep you to the bell. No, that's fine. Look, I, uh, I, I endorse what the CEO is saying. I'm quite happy for the administration to have a week and come back to us. And it may be at council that there isn't sufficient support to um, uh, present that uh, position that the Lord Mayor wishes to present. That is that this is a great thing for Adelaide, uh, that we have this school. Uh, and let me please deal with his question about the danger of having no voice, because what he's really saying is that we should keep quiet about these things. And that's not the case at all. Gosh. Absolutely. Well, Chair, uh, I object to that. Well, Lord Mayor. Just conjecture. What would you like to do? I'd like you to retract it. No, well, I, I, I argue honestly that I think by saying we have no voice and putting forward a position that doesn't disclose all of this information means we're keeping it quiet. That's the basis of the assertion. Let me, let me go further. We know there are indigenous remains adjacent to the construction site. That information has already been circulated to members of APLA. You're a member, you're a chair of APLA, Lord Mayor. You know there was a map circulated showing where the remains were. It hasn't been circulated to us here at Council, nor has the information related to that discovery some years ago when it was determined that the remains would be reburied 
and that there would be no further investigation, even though, as I understand it, it was recommended that there be further exploration to see if there was anything archaeologically significant on the site. So that's at risk. That's at risk if we proceed as you are proposing. Now, additionally, there is the, uh, the matter of hospital waste. Now, about a decade ago, uh, the area next to the Reed building uh, on, I understand, land that was managed by council at that time was remediated. It was found to be contaminated with agents including tar and ash, but it was remediated only to the road. It didn't extend to the Reed building. Now, if that contamination exists on the site of the Reed building, then we would want protocols to ensure that the contaminated material doesn't find its way onto bits of the parklands that it ought not. So there are protocols required there. There are just so many unanswered issues here. Uh, all of the ones that Councillor Clara hand raised, as well as uh, the ones that I mentioned about the construction zone, about which APLA is concerned, about the bikeway and pedestrian access, about which APLA is saying, well, how does that work? How does it all go on the eastern side? That's what they propose to us. There's no map, no detail provided. How about the access to the sporting fields? Is that not a threat to other parts of the parkland if a deal can't be reached with the University of Adelaide? And then the parking arrangements. That's a nonsense. And the hard court, the basis on which we're approving the map with the hard court, and it says quite clearly we're approving the detail, is an arrow saying potential hard court. Now, that could be a suite of tennis courts for all we know. There is insufficient detail. It's an absolute minefield. And the state government can enter into that minefield, as it's done with things like the Royal Adelaide, but it's not necessary for us. Thank you, Councillor. If I could ask members to please vote on the alternative note motion. All those in favour? All those opposed? That motion is carried. Um, I now have to ask for a member to uh, adjourn the meeting to... Would someone... Thank you. As, can I have a second for that? Thank you, Councillor Antic. Uh, all those in favour? The meeting is adjourned. Councillor Wilkinson, can you open your... Yes. As Chair of the Infrastructure and Public Space Committee, I declare the meeting open and uh, call for the adjournment. Have a move for adjournment. Oh, okay. Councillor Clarahan, yeah. second. Councillor Slammer. All those in favour of adjournment? All those opposed? Now adjourn the structure. And back to you, Councillor Bishop. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Um, the meeting of the Strategic Planning Partnerships Committee is reopened. So we're going to the next item. Thank you. So we're on item 11. Councillors, which is uh, the Heritage Incentive Scheme. Uh, Councillor Clarahan. Yes, I'm um, happy to move, but I do have a question. So we just wait for a second. Oh, look, if I could just um, <laughs> declare an interest, the, oh. uh, the owners of the building are clients of mine, and I so provide professional <laughs> advice on this particular project. So I'll decline. I'll second. Thank you. So, Councillor Moran, Councillor Moran seconded. Councillor Clarence. Uh, I just, we didn't, well, I didn't see any detail in relation to um, the need for resettling the foundations or. heritage site, we allocate funding for what can be seen from the street frontage. And I'm just wondering, given that this is to shore up what seems to be potentially foundations or whatever, uh, how come we're funding it, basically? Thank you. Through the Chair. Um, the pair of semi-detached cottages um, are quite severely cracked and we've had extensive engineering advice that the best way to do this is to underpin um, to the front wall, the side wall and the party wall, so if you like, the visible sections of both cottages 
uh, and the centre because it's a shared wall. And that's the scope of the funding that we're proposing council indoors. Um, the, the rooms at present are very severely cracked almost so that they're not habitable. Um, and we now have a, a second or a new owner for one half of these agreed to come on so that both cottages can be treated at the same time. So we're trying to take advantage of the ownership change plus the structural work that's required at the same time. Okay. Um, well, through the chair, I'm, I'm very happy for my um, for me moving that motion. Um, I just had some concerns about the extent uh, to which that work was being undertaken on the building. And given it's the front and the side and a party wall and both parties are happy to come together, which is not always easy, I'm very happy to support that. Councillor Moran, happy to speak. Um, is there any debate members? Uh, could we please vote? On the recommendation, all in favour? Thank you. So, councillors, we go to item 14. There's nothing for item 12 or 13. Item 14, any other business? Lord Mayor. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, members, you have a motion without notice before you that administration provides a report to council on the opportunities and options for a nightmare to be established in the City of Adelaide as an ambassador for the nighttime economy. Uh, Members, I'd like to talk to that if I have a second, please. I'm happy to second that. Thank, thank you, Councillor Clearham. Uh, members, I'd like to extend my thanks to you uh, because if I look in no particular order in the last few short months, Councillor Malani, seconded by Councillor Aviad, has supported an infrastructure project in Gawler Place. Um, Councillor Wilkinson, seconded by Councillor Clarahan, has supported uh, a laneway project from the Adelaide Central Market through to the railway station that Councillor Aviard, seconded by Councillor Corbell, has supported the tram extension along North Terrace in Adelaide City Council's $5 million investment into the southern side of the uh, footpath infrastructure along North Terrace. And that Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Wilkinson, then amended by Councillor Corbell and supported by Councillor Clarahan, have supported an investment into bikeway infrastructure, including a point-to-point -point bike share system. My point is, Chair, that we have commendably been a very infrastructure focused council and we're going to be building quite a number of very worthy city making projects over the next two years chair which will serve our city for decades and I think all the members can take some pride in that and it's going to be a very busy time for our hard-working CEO and directors and team um, as a result of that and these items have all been funded budgeted and endorsed so we look forward to it often in partnership with the state government of South Australia so, well done, members. However, um, setting infrastructure aside, there's more to our city. And our city has social, cultural um, aspects to it, which are just as important, Chair. Um, and that turns our attention to the nighttime economy, of which in itself is multifaceted, uh, being our restaurants, our cafes, our hotels, our theatres, our venues, indoor and outdoor, and everything associated with our nighttime economy members, it contributes a billion dollars a year to the City of Adelaide. It employs, at last count, 10,100 people in the city economy. This is critical. And I think also, when we talk about vibrancy in the nighttime economy, Chair, it talks to our brand. It talks to youth retention, it talks to tourism, so many important things. So there is a no, there is a notion of what's called a nightmare, although members, I recognise that it does in various cities around the world, go under different names. Um, the, this started in Rotterdam in the 1970s, and in recent years it is proliferating around Europe, to the point where now it's been adopted by um, Zurich, uh, Amsterdam, many cities throughout the Netherlands. Uh, it's also been adopted in Toulouse and it's been looked at by major cities such as London. And we're a city of firsts members, as you know, and uh, this is something maybe we could secure first 
in Australia and we could have a nightmare or an ambassador for the nighttime economy. We don't have many nightmares in Adelaide members. Uh, we have a great time in Adelaide, but the um, we could have an ambassador for our nighttime economy. Someone who feeds into us. Uh, my job as Lord Mayor Chair is 24 seven. The job of the elected members is 24 seven, serve, serving our community needs. We understand that. But are we close to all of the issues all of the time? That's the question. And could there be an advocate who's working across the likes of wonderful organisations such, such as the uh, uh, Australian Hotels Association, restaurant and catering, our arts communities, in order to provide a state of the nation report to us as elected members every quarter or every six months and be an advocate when required. So what I'm asking members is administration to look into this and to write us a report to look at the best case scenario for Adelaide and its applicability of having a nighttime economy advocate. That's what I'm asking for, Chair. We can look at the experience of various cities around the world members. We can cherry pick what works, what hasn't worked. We can learn from other cities' experience and we can craft our own program for an advocate who works with a range of groups to ensure that our nighttime economy remains strong, because I think we are in a position where it's strong. Members, you may have heard that other cities around Australia are experiencing issues associated with their nighttime economy. We're not, we're growing. And members, I want that to continue to grow as I know you do too. So an advocate or someone who's very close to the emerging issue so we don't miss any opportunities as a group of elected members to support our nighttime economy sounds like very good sense. We can have a debate about what we call it. We can have a debate about whether it's an honorary position. I don't think it's necessarily going to have uh, executive power. That's our job, but it's an advocacy job. It's an advocacy role, members. So I do encourage you to support this. I think it's uh, symptomatic of how important the nighttime economy, live music included, is smart, green, livable, and creative, members. Thank you. Councillor Clarehan, do you wish to speak? I'll reserve my right, please. Councillor Moran. Yes. I mean, I don't really care if there's a little job for somebody that uh, that the Lord is considering, but I really have to speak out. I mean, do we not know while we're sitting at this table, we've been elected by the City of Adelaide to run the daytime, the nighttime, the social, the cultural. The Lord Mayor named some physical bills that we've been doing. Um, that's that's lovely. That's a part of what we do. That's fairly the, the easy bits, really. Um, obviously, accepting money from government for bike paths is pretty easy. Um, proposing laneways that are our plans, easy too. But what, that's not what we're. That's just not what we're here for. Just to to do the infrastructure pro progress. We're also here to run the nighttime economy. The social, the cultural are just as important. I mean, is the Lord Mayor teaching? To suck it, us to suck heads. We know that. We have been running it very well and could always improve for a long time, since 175 years, I think. Um, <laughs> the appointment of whatever you call a nightmare um, is not a democratic appointment. We have over 800 staff here. I'm sure that if uh, the Lord Mayor felt that we were under concentrating, undervaluing the night economy, then we should speak to the CEO and we appoint a professional senior manager to put that on their portfolio. And if it's so important, then we could have a separate committee that we all sit at with our executive powers. I'm horrified to think that the Lord Mayor even has to say that um, it probably wouldn't have executive powers. But is this a dictatorship or something? This is this is going in an absolutely the wrong direction. We do not have, not and you can laugh, but when you give a person who's appointed uh, executive powers, that is completely separate from our democratic system. It's an outrage. I don't. I think it's all for laugh and nonsense. But the reason I'm angry is because it's circumventing every one of you. It is hard to get.
not, it would become rather a challenge and a very humorous, uh, becomes a bit of a nightmare, uh, as we did discuss before. So for me, it's about if we do need um, to look at ways to remedy or improve the night economy, I think we need to have a task force in place. Having an advocate is not going to be enough because there's no point of having a person doing this job without being well resourced. So they're going to need some level of support, whether it being from administration or some level of funding to be able to undertake research uh, or look at ways to provide the advice or add value to the night economy of council. Uh, so look, I also believe, and this has not been absent, uh, the AHA and also the Restaurant Academy Association are very loud when it comes to any issues of concern where they feel would affect their membership. So I don't think there's an absence or a void at the moment uh, of or lack of representation when it comes to hospitality, uh, specifically in hotels in the city, rather than in restaurants. So we are getting uh, a lot of that feedback through. Potentially, they can assist in developing policy on how things can improve and have more of a proactive approach than a reactive approach. Uh, and I think that's something that we can consider as a council. Uh, but first and foremost, I think when we're talking about any economy, we're talking about people. I mean, ultimately, it's about how do we attract people to the city? How do we keep people in the city? And I don't think it's just going to be a matter of the person standing and saying, look, we need to possibly extend trading hours for local licensing venues to past three o'clock. Or could it be a police and security issue? could be potentially a transport problem where we need to make sure we can get people home safe. It could be a whole, heap, a whole heap of stuff that we need to consider. But to actually call that person a nightmare, I think I have got more of an issue with that than I do with the outcome we're trying to get to. Uh, so I think I'm not opposed to the actual intent of the Lord Mayor to look at ways on how we can improve our night economy. I think we're ultimately the decision makers for this and we're ultimately all advocates for this. Uh, but I think it would hurt us to have a person out there on the public stage uh, that potentially may represent their views, consultative or not, not well resourced, um, and basically we're basically sending someone out there anchored already to the ground uh, where they can't, you know, fly up and, and see and give us a better view of what we're trying to achieve. So I think if we head down this path, Lord Mayor, where we are serious about the night, night economy, we set up a task force, potentially we could have people of state government involved, our council, other members, associations, et cetera, on that task force that could assist us. I think they would fill in all the blanks um, and potentially um, also provide uh, for the information and the advocacy that you're after without having to go down the line of calling it, uh, like I said, a nightmare. So look, I'd ask members to support this motion. It does take into account what the Lord Mayor is trying to achieve. Uh, but I also think um, it would deliver more of an outcome to council because it will provide for a resourced group um, that can support us um, and potentially give council uh, a better, um, I guess, better policy or input into better policy um, into the future. So I'd ask them to support this. Uh, Councillor Antti, did you wish to speak? Uh, I am going to take a very unusual approach to this and I'm not going to uh, speak to this issue despite the fact that I didn't support it. So I um, uh, reserve my right if you call it that. Thank you, Jen. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, I, I congratulate um, Councillor Abia. This is a very good motion. This is how Council should conduct itself um, rather than just put some person there that may, may or may not disagree with um, Council's position, which would then put us in an extremely embarrassing position. Um, we need to get all the, uh, if, if it's um, seen as it is the night time, sounds like the night time economy is booming and uh, we're coping with it very well. But if the members feel that there's <coughs> some more attention that we need to give it, um, then I think this is the appropriate way to deal with it and I'm very happy to support it. Are you able to speak to that and then some others will? Speak to me. Lord Mayor. Thanks, Chair. Uh, I'll look to the mover of the amendment uh, for some comfort around that if we could look to the nightmare models. Let's sit, members, let's just set aside the name nightmare. If, if, I, if I'd come into this an evening economy champion or evening economy advocate, I sense that uh, politics wouldn't have got in the way of a very good idea. So, members, the if the mover of the amendment could uh, indicate some comfort around if we could look to the nightmare models and other models as a means of informing this report. It's the report that I'm after, Chair. So because I also say, members, that talking to the amendment, uh, 
is that the we have resident groups who are representing our residential sectors of the city. We have a Lord Mayor's Business Engagement Forum of which very learned folks sit on that and keep us informed. I'm actually looking for the same mechanism specifically for the nighttime economy, recognising its importance. That's the intent of this. I think we've got caught up on a name, members. Uh, and as I say, sometimes politics gets in the way of very good ideas. In the same breath though, Chair, I don't want us to see us creating another level of bureaucracy and not only experience duplication, triplication, but it just goes on and on and on. Uh, this is a fairly light touch in terms of resources, and that's something I would hope to see in the report when it came back. We already have an evening economy of strategy, as you all know, members. Good evening, Adelaide. It's an endorsed strategy for this council for the evening economy. We don't need to go and do that again. So if I could seek some comfort from the mover of the amendment that we could reference the nightmare programs as a means of informing the report, I would then support the amendment. Yeah. I actually have a problem with the name Nightmare. I mean, any models around, I have no problems, but uh, revising models, et cetera, is not an issue, but I wouldn't want to reference it in a specific motion. I wouldn't second it. You could use other words, Jim. Um, I think it's interesting. Can I speak to you? Councillor Clara, how are you? I'd like to speak then. Yeah. Look, I can see merit in this amendment However, I think the intent was that we keep it open. And I, don't, I think it's a mistake to actually come up with the answer right now. I think it's important that we actually look at what other, other cities are doing in terms of whether it's the nightmare, whether it's the live, whether it's the nighttime champion, advocate, whatever. I think there are some other models out there that we need to be looking at and value adding and assessing whether those models are transferable. I also take Councillor Aviad's point. I mean, if you look, to think that the evening economy is a billion dollar economy, that is mind boggling. In the same way that our international education sector is a billion dollar economy. And you look at the resourcing of that and what it contributes to the vibrancy and economic well-being and cultural diversity of this city. Now, I'm a member of Study Adelaide, and that's a task force or a board that's been put together to manage that very valuable um, sector in our, in our economy and in our communities. So why wouldn't you actually think about maybe doing the same thing for our nighttime economy. That's what that is doing. So, but I think this is too prescriptive and I think that it needs to be kept, it's too, it needs to be left open. And I agree with the Lord Mayor. What we want is a report back to council on the options available, either or an and or even, and possibly other strategies where we can really get our nighttime. We're on the front foot with our nighttime economy and we need to stay that way. And I think that by having either a task force and or uh, an evening, a nighttime champion would be worth considering. Let's not come up with a solution. Okay, some people don't like the idea of nightmare and there's lots of, you know, I mean, Councillor Moran's, Moran's raised an issue, someone else has sort of had a throwback back comment about nightmare unhindly or whatever, but that just really sidetracks the issue. We have a very valuable economy and we need to be totally supportive and we need to be on the front foot and we need to be open-minded. Are we serious about our Good Evening Adelaide strategy? Are we serious about our laneway strategy? If we are, well then we need to be really open to how we value add to it. We are a UNESCO city of live music. Are we really serious about leveraging that? Let's, I think um, that uh, the Lord Mayor's suggestion of the and or uh, is, or the both, is a very reasonable argument. And so I would, I would prefer that um, that that's included in this amendment. Otherwise, I shall vote against it 
and I would hope that um, someone else would be able to move the alternative. Could I ask the uh, councillors if I can speak from the chair? Thank you. Um, could, if I could just make a suggestion, I think for a way for everybody to get what they're after, uh, which is this report on some opportunities and options, that if we kept it to um, uh, administration provide a report to council by November 16 on the opportunities and options mm. on ways to add values to the nighttime economies, that would take in all of those things. Just as simply as that. Um, I just ask Councillor Abbey. So, as, as opposed to setting up a task force or a nightmare, that actually, if we ask for a paper that can uh, look at all of those things, which I think is what Councillor Clarahan is saying, and we keep it open, could I um, perhaps put that to. I'll second that. You don't need to second that. I don't need to. Oh, I actually need, oh, need Councillor Abbey yes. to see if he's happy. So, just to get that clearly, the administration provides a report to Council by November 2016 on opportunities and options on ways no, to please. add value to the night time economy. Who's the word on the ways? So options to add value, yeah, so lose, lose on ways. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I'm happy to support that if Councillor Moran supports it. You so happy? that's a variation, so I need that to go to back to the floor. Is there any further debate? No, you summed up. I haven't um, summed up. No. So could we please vote on this? I haven't summed up yet. You haven't summed up. I'm sorry, Councillor Aviad. I thought you just said you had. That's all right. Look, I just want to give clarity to the room and also to the public. I, in no way, shape, or form, support a word of a single champion, a nightmare for the city of Adelaide. I don't support that. So I don't care what the report says, I will not be supporting that. So that's why I wanted to give clarity to the room today what my current position is. So there isn't room later where I'll be presented with a report that has that mention where someone would look at me and say, uh, you were open to the idea. I'm not open to the idea. I think it's a big political risk. It can be played against the council and specifically against the Lord Mayor. And it's not risk I'm prepared to take for what it can bring in positive. If we're after outcomes, we can deliver outcomes by resourcing something, whatever you want to call it, those options, those ideas and values that may come back to council. So I just want to be clear on public record that I do not support uh, that specific intent or phrase. Uh, it might have worked somewhere else. I don't specifically, I need to be heavily convinced that I could work in Adelaide, but like I said, I see some serious issues attached to such a phrase. And uh, we'll what see. What do you want to do? So I'd ask, I'm happy to support this at this stage, and we'll see what uh, what the report brings back to council. Thank you. So, councillors, if I can ask us to vote on this variation to the amendment. We've done that. On the amendment, thank you. All in favour? Thank you. No nightmare. Substantial. Substantive. So I have to go back to the Lord Mayor. Thank you, Chair. I'll sum up briefly. Uh, members, this is not to take away from you or to take away from me. This is to add to our city. This is, and I support the amendment, so the amendment now becomes a substantive. But I do hope that administration look at all ways, recognising, Chair, that we already have a Good Evening Adelaide strategy in place, that we look at all ways to ensure that we are very, very close to that community in all of its facets, commercial, cultural, the arts, all of the diversity of venues, tourism included. It is so important to the City of Adelaide. And members, I didn't mention, but you already know it, that we are a UNESCO City of Music. This surely is part of that story too. And that surely should be part of this report that's gonna come back to the members in November. So members, don't feel threatened by this. I sense that some of you are. I'm the one who moved it and I'm the Lord Mayor and I've possibly got the most to lose and I still moved it because that's how passionate I am members about the evening economy in Adelaide because I think it talks to our brand. It talks to the brand of the city of Adelaide and its competitiveness and it talks to tourism. So I welcome the report. Uh, thank you for your comments. I welcome and I accepted the uh, amendment with the variation and I look forward to the report as you do. Thank you, members.
Now we need to vote on the motion as amended. If I can ask councillors to vote, all in favour? Thank you. That motion is carried. Is there any other business? No. Uh, and there are no items seeking exclusion or confidential, so therefore I will close the meeting. Thank you. <laughs>
members if we could reconvene. Uh, members, as chair of the Infrastructure and Public Space Committee, I reconvene the, uh, the meeting at 7.09. Um, start with acknowledgement of country. The Infrastructure and Public Space Committee acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with land. We acknowledge they are a continuing importance of the Ghana people today. And we indeed discussed such issues at the last committee. Apologies for leave of absence. On leave, Councillor Corbell and Hinder, Deputy Lord Mayor. Apologies, Councillor Milani. Confirmation of minutes, do I have a motion for the minutes? Councillor Abia, seconder. Councillor Martin. Uh, any discussion on the minutes? I put that, all those in favour? All those opposed? Carried, thank you. Public forum, we have nil items on the public forum. Chair's verbal report, I have no report this evening. Items for adoption on block, there are two items on the agenda. Item seven, consent to grant of easement for electricity supply purpose for distribution lessor corporation, Victoria Park, Paka, Pakunthi. That wasn't very convincing. Do <laughs> you want to run that one past me? <laughs> uh, no. Victoria. Oh, Victoria. <laughs> no. Um, anyone calling that one out? No. Uh, item eight, University of Adelaide Footbridge Love Locks. Councillor Moran. Doesn't have to be pulled out. Pulled out. Okay, I now put the on block singular item seven. All those in, do you have a mover for that? To move on block? The Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Clarahan. Any discussion on that? On block, all those in favour? All those opposed? That's carried. That brings us to item eight. Councillor Moran, University of Adelaide. No, sorry, Bridge. I didn't call that out. Councillor Antic. Oh, Councillor Antic. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, look, I'm happy to call it out, Chair. Are you moving it? No, I'm going to move in the amendment. Okay. Well, I wasn't can speaking I, can to you in that position. Give me a moment. Take, Sorry, Councillor Martin, if I could just take some advice from my secretary. Just like um, Moran called it out. And you called Councillor Moran first. Okay, so we have a new movement, Councillor Martin. Mm -hmm. no, no, no. Oh, no, no, sorry, I'm having to stand by my calling out. Okay, okay. thank you, thank you, Catherine. That makes it simpler. Councillor Martin, you've okay. done yourself in there. And do we have a seconder? Yeah. Um, Councillor Antic. Sorry, I didn't realise this was a committee my, my motion. I thought it was motion on notice, so that's why I put my hand up to start with. But seeing it is going to be called out anyway by Councillor Martin, I would prefer me to call it out and leave this printed. This is a very good um, motion. Um, I've been thinking about seriously, we're obviously going to um, take the locks off and put them onto an art installation, as you've seen outside the Hart Centre in um, Hutt Street, although I think they're stepping away from that now. Um, I thought the, obviously it's a romantic idea, um, but it, it's it's a bit bit like smoking, it's eventually going to kill you. And eventually the way, the, um, I don't know, oh, I'm sorry. Love just kills everybody. It is, is going to kill you eventually. Eventually the locks on the bridge will pull the bridge down. I know we've had a report that that might be one year off, but I think we need to act nimbly. Well, no, if our, if our, um, uh, numbers of um, tourists, and it is, tends to be tourists, um, increases as the Lord Mayor tells us it's going to be. I think the 10 years is a very, um, a very long time. I think it's more like one or two years. Um, also, we've got the high school down there with all the, I gather it's going to be a co ed. Oh, of course it's a co ed high school. So there's a, a greater um, call on love locks. But um, this is a beautiful, a beautiful, a 
beautiful bridge. It's a historic bridge. It's a um, heritage bridge, um, and it really does mar the um, the engineering, uh, the, the lovely look of the bridge too. Um, I'm not completely hard-hearted, and lovers need their ways to um, express their love. But this one, we have actually pulled the bridge down. Melbourne's taking theirs off. Paris is taking theirs off. Every purse, every city, major city that's allowed, um, with the goodness of their heart, with a warm-hearted expression of love, has eventually had to cut the locks off. Now, um, if we could freeze the number of locks in time, and it wasn't pulling the bridge down, it like, stopped today, then maybe they would have an argument for it. But it's not. The locks are going on every day. They're very heavy. Um, and I think the council's idea of um, having another artwork that um, people, lovers can put their locks on, just not on the bridge, is a very good um, compromise. But um, I think to say that we take them off that bridge or another bridge is is um, is silly because you look at the structure of the other bridges, that the fine wire that they get through on that one is the one that attracts the locks. So if we take them off that, it's not going to go to another bridge. Hopefully it will go to our artwork. But um, I think this is a, um, that's something that has to be done. I've been reading the Facebook and it's, it's not a tsunami of criticism to council. Uh, it's pretty even, most people think it's sensible. Having seen that it's done in other cities, we're not being little and backward at all. Um, quite the reverse, if we leave them on, we're being little and backward. Um, we need to keep up with the international cities that are taking the locks off. Um, we've only got one bridge, it's a small one, and we're replacing it. So I urge you to support this motion. Councillor Hantick and second. Oh, I am, but before I do that, I just have a couple of questions of administration, if I could. Um, just, uh, the, the report talks about, I mean, it sort of fixates on the issue of the encroachment uh, into the walkway area, and it sort of discusses the issue of the, the load, bridge loadings from the locks and structural integrity of the bridge. It sort of skips over that a little bit, though. I mean, the issue is, is it not, that um, the, the, the locks are causing weight on the bridge and they are ultimately going to cause structural problems. Is that right? I throw that to the administration. Yeah. Uh, through you, Chair, uh, I guess the um, the locks ultimately will cause some structural concerns for the uh, for the bridge and the uh, uh, and, and handrails. Yeah. Um, but uh, what we're alluding to in the report is that's some time away, so it's yeah. not an immediate concern, but just to pick up on uh, Councillor Rain's comments that uh, the, uh, the acceleration of the locks attached to the bridge is sort of an unknown factor. So um, so at some point it will, but um, we just didn't think it was, at this point, a, a major concern. For so, the, so the very learned analogy of cigarette smoking, uh, which was very good by the way, uh, um, is, a, is a fairly apt one there though. It's, it is a process which may not be causing immediate problems, but ultimately it's going to be. And if you were, for example, a GP or a doctor, you'd say stop smoking, presumably. <laughs> Oh, well, 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 that's a question. Qualified to answer that question. Anyway, anyway, the answer, seriously, the answer is yes. Um, so, can I ask you this question? Take into account, I have just been on the Pont d'Art in Paris, and I did find this somewhat unfortunate and cheapskate lock. Uh, I love props. You love props. I love them. I love them. I love them. Uh, but this one appears to be heavily corroded. Is that the? Uh, is that the norm? I mean, there's a fair bit of corrosion that goes through the bridges. Is that, is that something which is good for the bridge, corrosion like that? Oh, the, the inner lawyer. I'm just saying, the question. That's a question. The witness. The witness. The witness. It's a simple question. Is corrosion good for a bridge? Oh. <laughs> yes or no? It's a very really simple question. I'll just ask, ask Mr. Brown to answer that question. Yes or no? I've thought long and hard through about this question, Chair, and the, and the answer's no. Thank you for that. Could I have um, that answer again, please? <laughs> so, so I've just got one final question, just one final question while we, while we ask it. In addition to the fact that they are going to cause weight damage to the bridge and they are corrosive, which is there's also damage to the bridge, there's also now this issue that's been highlighted of people catching them. So presumably toddlers and children of that nature, little kids who, you know, are all uh, little children might potentially walk past them. I, mean, I saw a couple of them down there today which were that long poking right out into the into the walkway, so that, that's presumably a problem as well. The report has highlighted that. that that's that's some that's a that's a, an additional concern, perhaps we hadn't thought of as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's a question. That's a question. Anyway, it's about, isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, it's it's it. Okay, so anyway, we've established that there, there are serious problems with the with the locks. So look, what I'm saying is this is not um, this is not a, a factor which is unique to this city. This process has been 
this fad has been developing since uh, very early times in this century and it's sort of generated from apparently Serbia where, where this, this trend started. It travelled through Paris and <coughs> the Parisians are now thoroughly, thoroughly fed up with it, absolutely thoroughly, thoroughly fed up with it and to the point where there 45 million of them or something, one tonne of them were removed quite recently. So this is not, as Councillor Moran quite rightly says, this is not something which is uh, backward looking. This is us actually being, we, we, this council loves doing things that Europe do. I mean, we love it, we love it. Everything Copenhagen does, we endorse with, with a double thumbs up. Um, I can say quite comfortably, these are the cities that have, these are the cities that have addressed the issue. Portland have removed them. Paris has removed them. I think it's coming up to twice. Melbourne has removed them. Uh, I can't read that one, but it's Euclid in Canada has, has removed them. Florence have removed them. Dublin have removed them. Canberra has removed them. That one I can't read either. I'm writing up a document. Uh, Venice has put a prohibition on them. So has Berlin. Cities all over the world have fallen out of love with this fad. It's as simple as that. Um, in New York, Locksport enthusiasts, who I might say have offered here to come and do this for nothing. There is no cost associated with this. They will unlock the locks leave them open, and then presumably if we have an opportunity to put some public art, which Councillor Moran, Moran quite rightly points out, would be a very appropriate place for these to be, to be placed, can be reattached onto that, onto that thing. There really is no downside out of this. I mean, this is um, quite simply um, an issue of, of common sense. I mean, we, we, we can do this. This is not about um, being Grinches or that sort of thing. We are following the worldwide trend. Um, it is an opportunity for us to do that, and I think you know, this is this is um, something which, whether we do it now or we do it in ten years, ten years will be behind the behind the eight ball. We might as well do it now. They are damaging. They are doing damage to the bridge. It may be a cute idea, but at the end of the day, um, it's it's it is our bridge and the history of the bridge is more important than this fad. And what I'm urging councillors to do is support this motion today. Let's choose uh, history over sentiment. And I think that's really the issue. So I urge councillors to support it. Thank you, Councillor Antek, and also thank you for um, doing an overseas trip to research your presentation <laughs> tonight. To that was a holiday. That was a holiday. Um, uh, uh, Councillor Sebastian, I mean, Councillor Abia. Thank you, uh, Chair. Look, I think let's take this back to the start. Uh, I think when Councillor Antek raised this, he had a concern around the structural integrity of the bridge. That's why it was raised originally. And he was nice enough to, to add to the motion that, look, it's one thing if there is going to be a structural issue, it's important we have an alternative to this current um, to this current arrangement where people can celebrate their love by putting locks or something else somewhere else. <coughs> so that's the initial problem. So the report that's come back has clearly said to us that there isn't a problem today, but there is potentially a foreseeable problem in the future. So I think we do have... Uh, we do have to act or we can choose to ignore and have a future council act. That's the decision there. there. I think there is no question that this will be a problem later. Is it a problem today? No, it's not a problem today. With uh, the exception of a few cyclists catching lycra on it, etc., which I have no problem. I would enjoy watching a couple of people catch on there, but if we have to. But uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't currently uh, present a danger to anyone on that bridge, walking on the bridge and the bridge collapsing, but it will in the future. So I think it's important that we do know we have to do something about it. So I think what we have to discuss tonight is, do we want to do something about it now or do we want to do something about it later? So I think that takes me, in my mind, to the next stage of we need to set up an alternative that needs to occur. Uh, whether we decide to dismantle these locks or not, we need to go down the path of setting up an alternative somewhere else where people can um, visit the um, the arts installation and install whatever locks they want to do on it. I think that has to be a long-term solution. We do have to come up with that solution. So I think it leaves us with a single option is, we do install an art structure, so I don't have a problem with that part of the motion. Today I celebrate my first year anniversary to my wife. I don't have a lock on the bridge, so I'm not sentimental about it, but it is a bit of a, it is a, bit of a hard decision, it is. It's just a question on how we deal with that. So. I don't oppose an art installation uh, where people can have an alternative to install it. I am a little bit unsure about us today clipping all those locks off. We might need to have a, an extension on the leniency or the amnesty where people can remove uh, their locks and take their time or sit there and hold hands and cry or look at how much lawyers have cost for divorces and they can't remove the locks. I don't know. Just it, might, it might need a bit more time. So look, what I'm probably trying to, I don't think we need to act on it now. So to put it three months 
um, amnesty in, I think is potentially unfair. I think if we let this go for 12 months, it's not going to be a problem. If people want to go there, remove their locks, do what they need to do. So look, what I'm proposing to do is, look, let's note to the public that this is important. Let's not have the stick approach. Let's have a carrot approach. Let's tell them we're going to be installing an arts, um, an arts um, installation for their heart. Let's have that set up so people can start setting their locks on. And then after that, we can start removing gradually all the current locks that are impeding on the bridge. And that will cause an issue for a future council. None of us will be here, probably Anne will. But, uh, <laughs> and that's, that's where, for me, I think it's where we need to go. So I think I would like to move. I'm a, happy to incorporate that into my original motion. Okay. The three months amnesty to ask people. No, we've got that already. Yeah, okay. What I would like to see is the arts installation installed first before we remove any locks. That gives the opportunity for people to go there, remove their own locks and install them on a new arts installation. So I think what I'd like to see is to move, if I can just have a second to do that. So note the council has addressed to determine the encroachment, that's fine. Notes the undertaking of full, that's fine. Recommends the allocation of the 30,000, that's fine. Consult is fine. If we could move to the last, supports the removal of the love locks from the University of the Footbridge after the arts installation is in place. I'm happy to take that on board. A second, uh, Councillor Andy, can you happy to take that on board? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Supports the removal of the love locks from the University of Footbridge after the arts installation. With the three month amnesty. After the thing is installed, yeah. yeah with, with a three month amnesty yeah, period for existing lock on is to relocate yeah. the lot. So if I could get a that's moved in. So I could just speak briefly to that. That gives us more of a carrot approach. We're basically saying to people, look, this is an issue. We're educating people Sorry, about it. Yeah. I just uh, checked that the second is happening. I'm sure. Sorry, we're all that's all we're saying, is it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, move and second. are happy to amend, to uh, adjust right. there. Look, this is more of a carrot approach. We're basically explaining to people, educating the people that this will be a long term challenge for our city. It might be 10, 15, 20 years. I don't know when. We're presenting them with another option so they can go and remove their own locks or install new locks on a new arts display. And that way, we're not having the approach of breaking many people's hearts by dealing with this without having an arts installation in its place first. So, look, I ask members to support this. I think this is a sensible approach. It will allow us a window to explain to people the reason at which we're acting. And we're not basically just simply going out there. Um, I think Councillor Adtech has already had some a pair of clippers in his car. He's ready to go out there tonight to get started on it. But, but I, I think I think it's important that we, we have an option for people before we dismantle the current arrangements. So, Thank you, Councillor Abiyad. Next is Councillor Martin, and the Lord Mayor, and then uh, Yes, thank you, Councilor Chair. Flarehan. I'd like to move an amendment to the motion that's up there, and that is that the Infrastructure and Public Space Committee recommends to Council that Council notes the report of the Administration on the University of Adelaide Footbridge Love Locks. Full stop. Well, we've noted it. No, no, everything stays the same. We're simply noting the report. No action is proposed. That's the intention of the motion. I'm happy to take the administration's advice whether that motion serves the purpose for which it's intended. We just note the report. For your chair, just to be clear, that would result in no action being taken. Oh, yes, that'd be good. I consider that a direct negative. Yeah. Uh, you have to vote against this motion to get that, and I'll put that up there. Yeah. All right. Okay, I, I, we can't accept that amendment. And can't accept amendment that. Because it's a direct negative. Okay. Um, all right, then I'll propose an alternative uh, amendment, uh, if that is not acceptable. Uh, and the amendment is... Delete three, delete four, delete five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with all due respect, that is delete. still a negative. Is it? It's the same outcome. I think I think that's still effectively a negative. So you could perhaps speak against the. Uh, then uh, if the uh, if right. need to then put up an alternative motion. Okay, well, I, 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 I regret that. Well, look, 
look, I'll, I'll speak against it, and I, I am dismayed that there is so much support for this because our, our most cost conscious councillors, the ones who are ever complaining about the workload of staff and wasteful expenditure, the people who are loudest in this council are advocating we go out and spend 30 grand on an artwork which is about the same money that a married couple receives as an aged pension <coughs> on an artwork for what? You know, the structure onto which love-struck couples place their padlocks is perfectly fine. There is nothing wrong with it. We have heard the administration say, despite the fear, the unfounded fear that the bridge will fall down, there is no danger whatever to the structure of the bridge. That's not what they said. Well, I'm talking in the present. If you wish to talk in the 21st, uh, end of the 21st century, 22nd century, you do it. But the advice that you have before you is that there is no threat to the structure of the bridge. And moreover, might I remind you that our good friend that, uh, in Daily today published a photograph of an F.J. Holden hanging from the bridge itself. Now, the metal in the locks that are on the bridge would amount to about the driver's door of the Holden. There are so few. It is not an issue. Now, despite all of this, Despite all of this, we go out and find another reason now to suggest that this is a problem. That is that somebody could be injured by one of these locks. Now, let me say, I walk across that bridge every day and I have never been attacked by one of those padlocks. And I have looked at them carefully. I have looked at them carefully. They are not aggressive. In fact, most of them have words of love inscribed on them. Well, look, uh, Councillor Andy, I, I'm afraid that <laughs> Councillor Andy needs to feel the love that the couples who place their padlocks on the bridge. I'll give you this one. They, they, they obviously feel something he's never felt. And in, in oh, fact, oh, I suggested oh, I suggested earlier today that what he really needs is the love of a good woman to get him over this spill. A good woman with a passion. Oh, who can place it on the bridge <laughs> as a sign of their commitment. Somebody had to do it. Somebody had to do it. Nothing wrong with that. Now, look, I was contemplating having a look online to see if I could find someone for you today, but I just didn't have the time. Seriously, though, why, why are we debating this? This, this bridge, no, but why are, we, why are we proposing to remove these padlocks? They, they, are, part, they are part of the character of this city. Uh, they are important to this city. And moreover, and moreover, and moreover let me tell you, even Councillor Antic admits that in locations where they've taken them away, they do it again. And that's because the attraction of placing a padlock on a bridge when it is forbidden is even more attractive. So the likelihood is that this council will waste $30,000 of ratepayers' money on a structure that will not be used and still be fretting about whether or not there's any structural threat to the bridge. And there is none. There is none. Now, we have footpaths around this city on which people are tripping every day and $30,000 would go a long way to ease the pain and suffering of ratepayers who, who tip over on a regular basis. Now, I would suggest to you that what's being proposed here is the equivalent of somebody outlawing putting your initials in a tree in the 18th century. And that's where this kind, that's where this kind of proposal comes from, the Dark Ages. Why not just celebrate the city and allow these padlocks to remain? Uh, is, is, it, is it not such an unreasonable thing? I mean, look, just leave the love struck alone. Try to understand how they feel. They're making a commitment. And what follows is always happy. So allow themselves the moment of joy of placing the padlock on the bridge. Yeah. Very nice. 30 seconds to spare, Lord Mayor. Okay. How long that the motion be called? Chair, members, I have a very key question which is not covered in the report, Chair, but should we invest $30,000 of ratepayers' funds into the establishment of a suitable piece of art and 
encourage folks to put their lock onto that piece of art chair, there's no guarantee that they will. So we may be, as Councillor Martin alluded to, and I to some degree find myself very disturbed and agreeing with Councillor Martin, but the, the, we could achieve nothing, <coughs> meaning we have a piece of art which we might be putting locks on it ourselves to make sure that it actually looks loved, but people continue to put locks on the bridge and that will come at a cost because then we will then have this dynamic chair where we then need to continually remove locks from the bridge, which will come at yet another cost over and above $30,000. It could cost another three, five, ten, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year, I don't know. So I have a question to administration. Has that been accounted for? The report doesn't talk to ongoing costs. Is it likely, Chair, that there could be an ongoing cost associated with simply people ignoring um, our well-intended piece of public art on which to put on their locks? That's a question to the administration. Uh, through you, Chair, uh, I guess the report just um, briefly alludes to the fact that there might there may be minimal ongoing costs um, for the room of locks. Um, I guess we could respond to the cutting of locks once the uh, amnesty period is over and continue to um, upkeep that. Um, I guess we could continue to engage the lock sport community as well um, and perhaps have an online event or something more regular where they can come in and remove the locks uh, that continue to be attached to the bridges. Um, I guess there may be other bridges that uh, uh, that uh, locks may, may attend to as well. Um, I guess behaviour is a difficult thing to uh, to deal with. Um, I guess the Love Locks example that uh, the Heart Foundation has had has been reasonably successful. Uh, City of Hull Pass also got an installation down there which I believe is being used by the public. So I think you're right. I think there would be, need to be some advertising and promotion about the new facility that's available uh, to the public to use and uh, we need to be conscious of um, reiterating that. Thank you. Thank you. I just finished oh, that, Chair. Sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm glad that we're focusing on the big strategic issues, Chair, yes. around the city. Um, the, I'll reserve my right on this uh, when we get to the vote, but that's my concern is that ongoing cost forever, our men, uh, over, it might make the $30,000 pale into comparison in terms of the capital cost. It actually could be the operational cost, Chair, which is where the real costs lie. Um, Councillor Clarence. Yeah, um, the last comment one of the ratepayers made to me today was what a waste of $30,000. That's my ratepayers' money. And my other concern is stealing it from the public art budget. I mean, really, I, I just think that it's totally unnecessary. I'm almost, I think it's probably one of those trends. Um, gestures that um, is going to lose, um, with eventually lose interest. Why would we spend $30,000 of ratepayers' money uh, when all we have to do, really, if, if it, we're that concerned about the impact on the bridge, is to say, okay, uh, in six months' time, we're removing all these uh, locks. Uh, because of corrosion or because of the weight or because of the danger to passing pedestrians. So after that, we're going to let loose these people who can who love picking locks. Those they can't get rid of, we will remove. End of story. And we just, just keep removing them. I just really don't think we should be giving public art a bad name uh, and sort of wasting um, our ratepayers' money. I don't think we should be taking money from our fund. I mean, it's it's difficult to manage with, our, with what we've got now. Why take more away from our budget? And I just think, you know, how many padlocks um, equals the weight of an FJ Holden? Does that put it in perspective? I mean, I think there's plenty of time left before it becomes a weight issue, maybe a corrosion issue. I'd have some concerns, no, no. but but we the hear that that's right not up. an issue either. So let's not waste ratepayers' money. Let's not steal from the public art budget. This, I expect, will just have a life of its own, and it won't be an issue in five years' time. And we won't have wasted thirty thousand dollars of ratepayers' money. Yeah, yeah. Councillor Bashaw, did you 
Um, if I could just speak very briefly. Um, I am um, just from a design perspective uh, familiar with when the uh, university footbridge was restored. It had an open balustrade design that didn't meet the building cases that babies could basically crawl off and fall into the river. Much effort was gone to, to come up with the sort of the tartan stainless steel webbing that's been put on to make it safe for, for uh, uh, people to cross. And uh, I, as from a design perspective, feel that the uh, lots kind of spoil the bridge. Uh, uh, I, I don't think it's a real structural issue or, or a safety issue in terms of things, but I just think it spoils the look of the bridge. And, and I don't know, I think other cities have spent $30,000 doing some alternative thing, they've just decided that fad's run its course and, and decided to uh, just cut them off from here on. So that's my, my take. I'm not quite sure where that leaves me in terms of the motion I'm talking. Okay, I'll put that uh, to, uh, And I just, I just want to sum up. Um, look, sum up um, I assume, uh, Chair, that you will support the motion because I agree it is a beautiful looking bridge and it's been completely ruined by, by uh, these locks. Um, I think that um, the, the cost answering the cost is um, th this organisation has no corporate memory at all um, and by the time this bridge is severely damaged by the locks um, I'm probably still going to be the only one that remembers it or maybe Phil maybe soon but uh, it will eventually cost us a lot of money you can bet your bottom dollar we don't get to it before there's a structural problem it'll be just put in the back pocket but anyway Everywhere else in the world has recognised that this is, this is a problem for these bridges. They go rusty, they are very heavy. The hold and hanging from it, I vaguely remember that. Um, spoke from the engineers today, that is absolutely completely different from a constant load on a bridge. Um, a one off uh, scenario like that, there's probably enough uh, lock there that turn away. He's What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, where was I? Um, Miranda, I think I think your husband is no more qualified than that. Is that, that is, um, um, then Mr. Burton is too <laughs> <laughs> I would be more than happy to have done what Sue um, said, is just cut the locks off. We were just actually given a sweetener. We thought, well, we're never going to get away with cutting the locks off without replacing them. But I'm with you. I think the arts structure, and if you want to delete that when this comes to council, I'd be more than happy to support that and perhaps um, extend the moratorium. But the locks have to go. They're a silly fashion. They've gone out of fashion everywhere else in the world. There's not, it, it can, it's only a little tiny bridge. If you had a, bought the clipper offer from the guys who have said they'd take it off for nothing. So there is no great cost. And I agree with Sue, perhaps we don't need the art installation, but that was there to put there to, to make it more palatable. Um, the Parisians hate it. People in Melbourne loathe them. It ruins their beautiful cityscape with these tacky, rusting, um, ridiculous um, uh, uh, right. contraptions. I can't think of what's the word. Uh, the council spends a lot of um, money on things that aren't completely necessary. I'm amazed when I saw the green wall that that cost $400,000. Next time I'm building a green wall company and um, David and I were discussed buying a, um, a clipper offer of uh, of these things if we decide to uh, make some money. But look, it is a ridiculous argument. It's not romance against anti-romance. These are just students and tourists and a few school kids. They're probably not together up. By the time the block's rusted, they're probably broken up. Um, but I, I urge you to support this motion. It shouldn't have been argued. This is just a normal maintenance problem on councils. And we shouldn't even have come to us to, to, have to thrash it out on the floor. The administration should come and say, these are rusting, they're getting heavy now, give us a date, you're going to cut them off. But I urge you to support Alex's motion, this is certainly not mine, Alex's motion to um, cut the... <laughs> give me a <laughs> Okay, I put that. Those in favour? Those opposed? Division. Oh, that's not important enough. That's, that's not very loving. Yeah, well, I thought it was. All those, those in favour. Those voting in favour. Please, please run. Ah, making stand. Councillor Antic, Councillor Moran, Councillor Abiyad, Councillor Wilkins, Councillor Bishop.
Where's the love? That's carried. Thank you, Mr. First. That brings us to item nine, items for committee to receive a note, nil. Ten out of session papers for committee to receive a note, nil. Other business, do we have any other business members? I do, Chair. Chair, I, um, thank you, Chair. I've got a motion without notice, which I will put to the floor. Um, the administration provides support to the Rymal Park kiosk lessees, being Esther and Paul Hardy, and formalising a memorial <coughs> plaque to be affixed to a nearby park bench in remembrance of the late Arnie Rossi for his contribution to the City of Adelaide and long standing history with Rymal Park and the kiosk. So I think it's fairly self explanatory, members, but I will talk. Many of us. I've got a second. Well, I, just, I need to declare a conflict. I, oh. I know the owners of the kiosk, so I'm going to. Conflict myself out of this somewhat conveniently. I mean, thank um, you, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you. So, Councillor Aviat, to second that. Please continue, Lord Mayor. Members, um, many, if not all of you, would have met Arnie. He's one of the great characters of the City of Adelaide and I think made a wonderful contribution to our city over many decades, including running for Lord Mayor on numerous many. occasions as you know. But uh, Arnie was the licensee of the Town Hall Cafe for some years and then following that was the licensee of the uh, Rival Park Kiosk. And a great character, a great contributor, came out from Rhodes in Greece in 1955 and his family moved and lived in the southwest corner of the city. So there is an enormously long contribution to the city of Adelaide. Uh, in terms of uh, all things Arnie. Arnie very unfortunately passed away and uh, but the kiosk remains in the family and I think it's great when a city honours its characters those that have really kind of contributed to the social cultural and commercial fabric of the city I think that's something which we should honour so without further ado um, I was approached by the relatives uh, Paul and Esther um, who are uh, the current licensees of the cafe about whether it would be appropriate and they are very respectful in their questioning uh, whether it would be appropriate to honour Arnie in some way and uh, I believe it is. So my motion talks to members a, um, a commemorative plaque in a position uh, close to the, the kiosk or on one of the park benches next to the kiosk or on the kiosk itself and I'd be happy to take advice from the administration as to the best spot. As long as that's done in consultation with Paul and Esther, I think that would be very important. So really this is just to commemorate one of the greats, one of the great characters of the City of Adelaide of which many of you know and have met. So I'll put that to the floor and thank you for seconding, Councillor Abia. Councillor Abia, seconding that. Just that kind of sentiment to the Lord Mayor. Okay, any further discussion, Councillor Moran? Could I ask that we um, bear in mind our memorials um, um, policy, policy um, and put it on a park bench. Okay, any further discussion, Councillor Martin? Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. Look, I, I endorse this entirely. I remember Arnie, and I always particularly enjoyed his presence at the Lord Merrill debates that occurred in the lead up to elections when he was standing. And uh, he was a, a wonderful man, and I enjoyed uh, those occasions. But uh, I just point out, I, I, I don't understand, perhaps people have noticed also, but uh, we are talking about something that notes with affection someone, uh, the council placing a, a, a plaque, and we've just voted down something similar, which is initiated by citizens, which is love locks on a bridge. Oh, with all due respect, Chair. I, I just, I just that find that it's a very it's extraordinary conversation. But nevertheless, no, it's not disrespectful at all. I'm simply pointing out that there's a contradiction in that. But look, I endorse entirely the proposal, uh, and I think it has great merit. I'll support it. Okay, I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Summed up. <laughs> my, my apologies, Lord <laughs> Mayor. <laughs> my apologies. Yeah. Right, fine, Chair. Yeah. Yeah. Summed up. Thank you. Good I think nothing more needed. So. Thank you. Um, that um, brings us to. Um, Close. Uh, the close of the meeting. So I close the meeting at 12 minutes to 8. Thank you. That's a record. Yeah.